Well, on the commodities front, oil and gold usually dominate the headlines, but soft commodities are also a vital part of the sector. Recently, the price forecast for sugar has turned a corner and looks like it's heading higher. And rubber exports are also set to jump off the back of recent rallies in crude oil. For an update on the future of soft commodities, we're joined by Jonathan Barrett, Managing Director with Commodity mm. Broking Services. Jonathan Barrett, welcome to Business Today. Good morning, Whitney. Now, we've seen a rally in sugar, so what's driving that? Uh, Whitney, sugar's been uh, such a volatile uh, commodity uh, just over the last, or since the beginning of the year. It's actually dropped by close to 55%. Uh, at the moment, we feel that drop is culminating some profit-taking, and there are also some fundamentals and technicals starting to come into line, which should see some form of recovery. Now, world stocks are also at 20-year lows. Are there also uh, geopolitical considerations in producers like Thailand? And how concerning is this? Well, that's one of the fundamental factors which is actually coming into play, um, just purely because that when you get political unrest in these areas, that people start to think the production or the supply of the commodity onto the market is restricted, and as a result of that, the price should start to uh, trade higher. Uh, do you think the market is, is relatively assured, though, that Thailand has a, has a grasp, the government there has a grasp on the, uh, mm. the political disruptions? Well, I think that's the main concern at the moment, because if you think Thailand, in terms of uh, there's a lot of sugar, um, close to a couple of hundred thousand tonnes, ready to be exported, and due to the political unrest that we're seeing there, it's actually all been delayed. And as a result of that, we're seeing that delay actually creep back into the pricing. I, I think it's, a, it's more of a, a temporary issue, but it just serves to highlight the concerns that these exporters have when, in fact, there are in politically un, uh, political areas where there is significant unrest. And, and Queensland, uh, the Australian state of Queensland, ships about 90% of the country's raw sugar. So given that there are the geopolitical concerns mm. with a major exporter like Thailand, does that mean that, that Australia's sugar industry is set for a windfall? I don't, I don't think it's a windfall. Um, I think when you've seen the price come back close to, say, 55%, I think what um, the producers in Queensland are looking for is actually more stability in the market. And, and hopefully these events will create that stability. To see the commodity drop by over half is, is disconcerting if you're a producer. So I think it's not a windfall, but what I think it is people will be pleased to see that we're getting some normality and stability back in the market. Now, India is a major consumer of uh, sugar. It's also predicted to switch from, from a major importer to an exporter. Mm. Is that a strategic play on behalf of the government, do you think? Look, I, I think so. I think there's a couple of factors which are coming, coming to the front, particularly with India. Um, I think it is a part of strategy. There's no doubt about it. But, but they've also had some very favourable planting conditions. And they've had rain all at the right time, which has culminated in, in a very impressive yield. So um, they're the expectations which we think. So I think it's a bit of both. All right, Jonathan Barrett, let's move on to another commodity that we don't hear too much about but is also very vital to manufacturers, and that is mm. rubber. Uh, that's climbed off the back of a rally in crude. Yeah. yeah, Winnie, there are two things there that people, I think, and this is where some of these commodities do start to look cheap. Um, we've got this Euro focus, Eurocentric on commodities. And when you look at a, a commodity like rubber, where 45% of it uh, is consumed in India, Malaysia and China, and these economies still remain relatively robust, any shortfall in production as a result of the instability in the global markets suggests that we don't actually have that needed supply to help these markets to manufacture. So you could get a situation, like we've seen in rubber, where this rally could be sustained for some time. Right. So you would say, though, then, that the Eurozone issues, the problems that we're seeing unfold in Europe and also the continued problems in the United States, are adding to that rally in rubber? Yeah, I think, I think definitely adding to that, uh, that rally in rubber at the moment, if not just for rubber, but for also some of the other commodities. Well, it's interesting, though, there, there's also concerns that there's a, a crimp on supplies. So why is that? Well, I, I think what we're, what we're getting through is, is this ability, um, you know, to be able to produce what actually is needed. And, and I think these are some of the concerns, not just for rubber, but also for some of the other commodities. Because when you don't produce what is needed and you focus on other areas of economic activity, like Europe and the States, 
you get to this situation where those production managers hold back on production. And as a result of that, those economies that actually need the commodity right, have to bid up for the price. And as a result of that, we see prices move higher. And that's something that we're actually thinking could actually occur. All right, let's move on to some other soft commodities before we go. Uh, the news hasn't been so great for the price of soybeans and palm oil. Mm. Is this cyclical or a seasonal situation? Uh, I think it is, uh, it's, it is uh, cyclical, right? But, um, but what I do feel is that we will come down with support, uh, a good support for soybeans because we do notice that China is certainly on the bid and any dip for soybeans in this cyclical uh, part of their trading will actually provide support for the commodity. So in the long run, I actually think soybeans are looking a little bit cheap. All right, Jonathan Barrett, always good to talk to you. We'll have to leave it there. Okay.